Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor is kind of hard to describe. It's got an inscrutable alien world that falls somewhere between Omicron's opaque cyberpunk dystopia and ToeJam & Earl's colorful psychedelic quirkiness. It's set in a universe of grand dungeon-crawling adventures and spacefaring exploits, but it's not itself a game about any of that. It's got the repeated daily rituals of an Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley, but none of the growth that comes with their chores. Really, the closest analog to most of what Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor is aiming for is probably Richard Hoffmeyer's Cart Life, a game about eking out an existence as a member of the working poor while dreaming of a better life. In Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor, you play as a girl beast who is, well, a janitor at a spaceport on Zabrin's Rock, who longs of escaping not just the drudgery of her job, but of the entire planet. She wishes for the epic adventures everyone around her seems to get. And as the game opens, she decides she wants to break out of her daily drudgery and tries adventuring in the planet's elaborate sewer dungeons. Unfortunately, she ends up cursed in minutes. Now, before she can explore the galaxy, she needs to get rid of an unlucky skull that follows her everywhere. And before she can do that, she needs to make sure that she can eat and not feel sick tomorrow. And that's not easy to do. As a janitor, she gets paid for every item cluttering up the spaceport that she incinerates. But not only does that pay a pittance, it's a pittance that gets paid out tomorrow. So to supplement her income, the janitor can try to sell what she finds rather than just burning it. But vendors only take specific items, and as a player you have a finite inventory space, so you need to be sure you can fence whatever it is you bother to pick up. The game uses a day-night cycle to convey a sense that this isn't just a job simulator so much as a slice-of-life game. We follow the janitor on her daily routine, from her first moments in the morning to when she goes to bed. Stardew Valley does something similar. You're not just playing a farm simulator, but following your farmer's whole life story. But where Stardew Valley's days give that game a sort of folksy stability that demarc constant progress, Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor's days are used to build a sense of running in place on a treadmill. Each day starts out optimistically enough. You wake up, you go to the terminal to collect your payment for yesterday's janitorial efforts, check your luck stat, and pray to your god of choice before heading out to breakfast. From there, though, a lot can and will go wrong. Every day the vendors change what items they're interested in within a given type, so the trash vendor may be buying and selling large and small scrap one day, but wiring or corroded plastic the next. He's always interested in the trash group of items, and he may be back to selling or buying scrap tomorrow, but you never know. Prices also fluctuate between vendors and between days, making it exceptionally hard to know if you're getting a good deal without spending a tremendous amount of time that the day-night cycle makes sure you don't really have. Oh, and every, I want to say, thee day is a holiday. The music and revelry is great, and there's plenty of cleanup to do the following day, but a lot of the vendors temporarily change stock towards religious items and celebration, and kind of throws your whole cycle off. You also want to make sure that each day you pray to the gods to increase your luck. But if you pray to the same god over and over and over again, it loses its efficacy, so you need to vary which shrine you visit regularly. Luck is actually super important to this game. It drives what objects you find on the ground, and I think, but I don't know, that it has an impact on things like item prices and the frequency of getting sick. The point is that like eating, cleaning, and selling, praying needs to be worked into your daily routine. Finally, about every day or two you'll get what the game implies is a sense of gender dysphoria. The camera gets distant and wiggly, the janitor stops walking upright, and all of the text gets scrambled and hard to read. To really fix the situation, you need to visit a gender change station and buy a pill. Apparently, Alan C. Girl Beasts have a whole host of genders and need to change them regularly. Who knew? Regardless, it's just one more expense hanging over your head and you never know when it's coming. You could read this upkeep cost as just about any medical condition that requires regular care, but it's clear the developers are trying to capture a sense of being trans or genderqueer. It's certainly not my place to say whether they've succeeded, but combined with the economic commentary, it's a game very much about being a marginalized member of the working poor. And that's probably about as far from a power fantasy as you can get. I'm going to be upfront. Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor is not for everyone. Until you know some reliable places to vend some of the most common items, the game is a slow burn of frustration and difficulty. You will get lost and you almost certainly will lose money your first few days. Pro tip, there's a monster that buys all colors of gems next to the dungeon entrance in the area of town with the bank, and there's a girl who buys bone fragments just across the way from there. And don't forget that spell swatches can be sold to the butterfly species in the purple district. All of this is hard-won knowledge that I'm weirdly proud to have memorized because it kept me going day-to-day -day through some hard times in the game. 
But even once you know the map well enough to sell things, you still get a sense that you're playing it wrong. Items worth hundreds of times the most amount of money you've ever seen in the game are all for sale throughout the city, and you're wondering why you can't afford them. Unexpected expenses happen all the time. Maybe you get robbed by one of the Imperial Guards who decided the janitor just can't stand up for herself. Maybe you had a crappy day burning trash yesterday so you have less money than usual, and after barely squeaking by with enough food, the janitor's body started feeling sick and needed to visit a gender machine that put you back down to basically zero cash. Once I had something like four credits to my name and was too hungry to go to bed, so I ended up scouring the spaceport on a rainy night for something, anything to eat, just so I could go to sleep. This is not the happiest of games sometimes, and that sense of being browbeaten, of alienation, of feeling like you're doing something wrong despite working really, really hard is absolutely the point of the game. This is made explicit by the Cursed Skull at the end of the game. It says outright that you're in a rut, unable to move on from where you currently are. It then invites you to join it, and the adventure you hired to get rid of it, on a grand journey through the stars. And that sounds awesome, but... It's pretty clearly a dream sequence. If you accept its offer, you walk with it to a ship and continue to walk until you're floating high above the city and the game fades to white as the credits roll. Then you wake up in bed and it's just the next day for you. There is no escape. There is no grand adventure waiting for you. There's barely scraping by and anything beyond that is just a dream. It's an oddly fatalistic and dour game for something that looks as cute as it does. It's hard to talk about this game without also bringing up Cart Life, since their subject matter is so closely related, as is their aim as games. Both games want you to empathize with characters trapped by economic circumstances, but who long for the sort of fulfillment their lives can't really allow right now. Both focus on the routine of the workday and the monotony of unskilled labor, the oppressive cost of simply existing weighed against meager incomes, and how to afford simple expenses like transportation to work or eating breakfast that some of us are lucky enough to never have to consider. But above all, I think they both stand as indictments of the idea that you can get ahead by just hard work alone. There's a threshold under which it takes a tremendous amount of hard work just to survive, and getting out of that cycle is driven more by luck than anything else. This is why luck is such a central mechanic in Spaceport Janitor. Even if luck were a nonsense stat that does nothing, and I don't think it is, the janitor's focus on it reflects a worldview that knows the capriciousness of life lived on the edge of poverty, to be one car breakdown or one unexpected medical expense away from absolute financial ruin. If there is a big difference between Cart Life and Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor, it's their interest in media and escapism. Cart Life was based, at least loosely, on people Robert Hoffmeyer knew in real life with their permission. It is utterly grounded, and the dreams of these characters are to do things like maintain custody of their daughter or start a new life in America with their pet cat. In contrast, Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor is more interested in escapism, not just because it's got cursed skulls and gender-flipping girl beast aliens, but because the janitor's dream is to be what every other video game protagonist is. The world around her is filled with fighters guilds and mages guilds, her planet has an elaborate system of dungeons full of treasure, and there's a spaceport where adventurers come and go daily. She'll find loot like quest markers, low-level weapons, spell swatches that presumably enable magic, and fancy enchanted scrolls dropped in mud by passing heroes. You'll find vendors that sell guns and armor that offer stat buffs to damage and health that you'll never be able to afford in a million years. Meanwhile, the closest you come to combat is using a medicine pack you found on the ground to cure your food poisoning after eating some cheap vending machine food because it was all you could afford. All of this results in meta-commentary on the nature of adventuring in video games. Games sell this idea that we can all be heroes, that we're all on our individual hikes to the top of power, wealth, and fame. It's the American view of capitalism systemized. Every level 1 character is just a temporarily embarrassed level 99 character on their way to the top. By placing the janitor in a world built for adventurers, but leaving it completely closed off to her, Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor tries to link its economic concerns with its metatextual criticisms, asking us to consider who gets left behind in both. And in either context, it's those for whom the hard work and progress narrative is a lie that surrounds them, but is obviously unobtainable. In finding beauty in the struggles of a character just trying to tread water, Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor suggests we need games that look at the struggle to progress more than games that celebrate the act of progression itself. And that's what it tries to do. It's an unflinching look at marginalized poverty in a cartoon alien spaceport, and that's both as goofy and as serious as it sounds. Like I said, it's not a game for everyone, but I think it works, especially as a sort of empathy piece that manages to explore poverty without falling into sadness porn. There are happy moments, not just getting rid of the curse at the end of the game, but finding the occasional delicious meal on the cheap or celebrating the holidays with music.
These small victories combined with the day-night cycle and everyday worries make it a slice of life piece rather than just systemizing poverty. And even if it's a life stuck in a rut by economic forces beyond her control, I'm glad I got to see the spaceport through the janitor's eyes and not some adventurer just passing through on the way to some epic loot.